Okay, guys, don't panic. Everybody stay calm. But something crazy is happening. Okay, I need every, all of you. Okay, just relax. Take a breath. We'll all be okay. Okay, I don't mean to alarm you, all right? But the impossible has just happened, okay? Everybody stay calm. Open world games are fun again. I mean, we were uh, going through it there for a while with open world design. Just, I mean, a ton of dirt and grass and like like rocks and stuff. Look, there's a big circle of enemies. Oh look, another one. What's that? One of 4,812 shiny rocks that you can collect? Don't mind if I do. A lot of the mid to late 2010s was like a graveyard for the entire concept. Some of the games might be fine, great even, but the world design was like a pissing match over who could have the biggest circle. My circle's bigger. No, my circle's bigger. My circle has 16 times the detail as my other circle. Each one multiplying in size, but becoming more empty and vapid than the last, until finally somebody at open world headquarters had two simultaneous epiphanies. One, wait a minute, these games are all in 3D, and two, hey, video games don't need to be bound by boring Earth rules, and after coming to these realizations, they decided to make their boldest move yet. They stopped making circles and started making spheres. They also got hooked on heroin due to a third unrelated epiphany. Quick shameless plug before I continue, uh, if you're watching this within the first couple of days of its release, I am in the middle of a game-related research study right now. I'm trying to keep it as vague as possible to not influence anybody's opinion, but if anybody's interested in participating, I'll leave a link in the description. It'll take like 15 to 30 minutes. You just play a couple games and do a survey so we can collect some data. If you do it, I will name my firstborn child after you. I'll remind you again at the end of the video. Uh, anyways, back to it. Today we're talking about depth, and not in characters or rich storytelling or any of that lame shit. I'm talking literal y-axis physical depth. This is something that's been around for a long time, obviously, particularly in open worlds that take place in cities with tons of tall structures, which I personally prefer a lot more than giant open fields. And then of course you have like peaks and valleys in just about any rural area, but some recent games have really kicked this concept into high gear. Like for example, Tears of the Kingdom. Breath of the Wild was already this giant sprawling map which, while featuring plenty of depth with its many mountains and caves, was still grounded and expanded mostly outwards. It was a hundred hour epic where you could just go off in any direction on this plane and muck about for however long you'd like. So with the sequel the question was, how do you make something that spreads out even farther, even more that way, that way, or that way? And the simple answer is you shouldn't. Breath of the Wild, in my opinion, was already verging on too wide, saved only by its different biomes and creative gameplay systems. Any more, and you not only hit a point of diminishing returns, you risk getting exhausting. So the sequel smartly didn't push out on that plane. Instead, it said, Look up. There's the sky. Go explore it. Look down. There's hell. Go explore it. And this was more than just being a slightly higher vantage point or fighting people on a roof instead of on the ground. These areas had their own maps, their own look, their own traversal challenges and puzzle types. They're separate. They're ignorable when you want and explorable when you change your mind. At a certain point, games definitely started glorifying the whole, whoa, I can literally look at anything and go there and that equates to fun thing. And personally, I blame Skyrim for making this idea as big as it is. Not to say it's a bad game for doing it, but I think it put everyone's focus on the wrong thing. It hardcore marketed the everything the light touches is your kingdom idea. Todd was on every stage in America saying, you see that mountain, that ravine, that chilies, you can go there. And that became the fixation, the thing that every open world game wanted to do. They wanted to show you, hey, you can go anywhere you want to see in my game as well even if it isn't interesting. You see those trees? You can go there. You see that giant expanse of literal nothingness that spans for miles? You can go there. Now, you might be saying, hey, aren't you just describing the idea of an open world? Shouldn't you be able to freely walk around everywhere? Isn't that the whole point? And you'd be right. Uh, wow, good job. Uh, look at you not just blindly accepting what I'm saying as a fact just because I said it kind of fast and through a screen. Your media literacy is exceptional, king. But to clarify, the problem isn't that the world's made more and more things fully explorable, it's that the idea of theirs to explore was more valuable than the things that the theirs contained. The takeaway was that you could often trick players. If there were more theirs to go, they'd think there was more stuff to do, even if there wasn't anything, which uh, might have been a decent theory if I had the reasoning skills of a goldfish cracker. The the entire point is that I want to explore because I think something interesting might actually be there, and ironically in trying to convince me that you have so much to explore without backing it up, you're actually proving to me that something interesting probably isn't anywhere. Your mistake was that I needed to see something for my interest to be piqued. I don't. I need to feel something. Even Bethesda themselves feel like they took the wrong lessons from their own game, making bigger and bigger, emptier and emptier worlds, but they're fully explorable, until eventually they created an entire universe filled with mostly procedurally generated content to match maximize its number of theirs. And while I haven't played Starfield yet, so I won't pass my own judgment, its overall audience reception and longevity hasn't been too stellar. It got good initial reviews, but it's basically missing from the game
Game Awards, and its player base has dropped below Skyrim, which is 12 years old within its first three months. And the common through line that's found in nearly every thread about the game, including longtime fans of Bethesda games, the handcrafted stuff is great, but the rest just dilutes the experience. Clearly, there's a disconnect here. The depths and the sky and tears of the kingdom are actually kind of risky moves from Nintendo because in a lot of ways they go against that Skyrim philosophy, a similar philosophy to what they used in Breath of the Wild, where at any point you could just find a shrine, a camp, a village to explore, you'd be moving off somewhere and XYZ would catch your eye so you'd go to it, which scratched your itch for exploration but also subtly led you to the right places with the game making certain landmarks more observable at different times. The stuff in the sky and the depths doesn't often catch your eye when you're walking around on ground level, they're outside of your line of sight mostly apart from when you launch yourself off of towers, which can be a friendly reminder that other stuff exists, but you aren't necessarily stumbling onto it organically. But it's also kind of genius because it's so antithetical to the whole see that over there design. Sometimes I'd be exploring and say, God, I've barely scratched the surface of this map, and then remember, oh yeah, uh, there's entire floors I haven't been to in hours. And I start wondering, man, what could even be up there? So I head up and things over there start catching my eye, so I screw around for a little bit until I want to head back down. I'm not always being led to it or reminded of it, it's like one big question mark, but that's why I want to know what's up there. I don't see it, I feel it. Elden Ring, same thing. It had this whole underground map that you always knew was sitting under your feet asking you to explore it further. And even when it had areas that weren't necessarily stacked on top of each other, they were just different biomes, it would give you like sneak peeks, pull you to random points on this giant map and make you curious about everything that's out there. Not even with what it necessarily showed you, but because of all the stuff you knew it didn't show you. Hogwarts Legacy doesn't have... Uh, nearly as good of an open world as either of these games, but it does have a fun direct comparison inside of a single game, because anybody who's played this knows that exploring Hogwarts Castle is infinitely more fun than exploring the grounds. And while part of that is probably just the castle getting more love and attention by the dev team, it's also just the fact that so much of what you explore is above you, below you, hidden in secret corridors. You know there's stuff all around you, but you can only see the small slice of your immediate area, so the only way to satiate your lust for adventure is not to look, it's to go. At any moment, you could be standing on top of a dungeon holding a giant troll, and you won't know until you go downstairs and check. I know Lords of the Fallen isn't an open world game, but I still want to talk about its whole parallel world shtick because it's exactly the kind of stuff I want to see in more open world games, especially fantasy ones. The fact that there's this dead world that changes the landscape, has its own set of challenges, and is always hiding there behind the regular world is the coolest goddamn thing, and it's yet another example of hiding your world to encourage exploration instead of relying on showing off massive empty sections of the map for a false sense of scope. I want to see more open world games with spirit realms or two different timelines that you can flip between, and obviously that's a ton of work and takes a lot of clever design but I'll take a tenth of the circle size with three times the layers any day of the week. Hell, I would have just hacked all of this off from Hogwarts Legacy if it just meant making the castle cooler. If you don't want to make an open world sandwich though, that's alright. I mean, it's a lot harder to fit into certain genres than others, but in that case, can we like... Can we start prioritizing different biomes again, please? Because like, I, I love the Spider-Man games, I love the new one as well, no spoilers, and I get why all three games have had the same base map. It's Spider-Man. Having him swing around Paris would look really weird. But Spidey 3, I, I'm gonna need the city to look like a Jackson Pollock of supervillains actually affecting the look of New York. There are so many small teases in 2 where you can see how the city looks like under very extreme circumstances, but it's always just for a fleeting moment. I think it would be kind of cool to start the next game with you immediately losing control of the city, and side quests all take place in specific regions that certain villains have taken over. And then you could theme those areas around the villains visually as well. Like, again, no spoilers for Spidey 2, so just assume the entire comic's rogues gallery is up for grabs here, but Martin Lee could turn part of New York into that crazy fractured dream space thing he does, Carnage could encase an area with a symbiote-like web of shadows, and Sandman could cover a bunch of buildings with sand. You pro I probably didn't need to explain that one. I feel like I've made this comparison before for something, but I really just want more superhero games especially to translate season 2 of Harley Quinn with Gotham split into these territories themed around different villains, and then just put that in a game. Counter offer, I will take any Batman game that's not Gotham Knights, that's my final offer. Not every open world game has gotten the memo of course, and we're always gonna have the formulaic bottom of the barrel slop every year, but I think the decisions and changes being made with some recent games are very encouraging ones. We're trending in the right direction, I think, after being stuck in the dark ages for a little while. In conclusion, goodbye. Also go do that survey. <laughs>